Hello and welcome back to Dr. Logic Awkwardly Does Logic while trying not to be too distracted by her cats. In this video, I'm going to give you what I promised you quite some time ago, and that is an account of the conditional and propositional logic. Now, if you remember our discussion of stoic conditionals, there was no agreement as to what the truth conditions for the conditional were. There was Philo, there was Diodorus, there was Chrysippus, there was this one other guy that nobody knows much about, nobody cares about. But unlike the other connectives, the conditional seems to be a lot more intractable. Conjunction is easy. If all of the conjuncts are true, the conjunction is true. Conditionals, on the other hand, are much more complex, and the ways that they occur in the English language are very, very. Logicians can make an entire career out of talking about different interpretations of conditionals. I'm only going to focus on one here, and it's a type of conditional called the material conditional which is actually gonna to correspond to Philo's account. Uh, a truth, uh, the truth of a conditional is determined by either the antecedent being false or the consequent being true. So it's not the case, just whether accidentally or as a rule, that the it is not the case that the antecedent is true and the consequent is false. So let me bring up my whiteboard so that we can see what this looks like. So if we have two atoms, P and Q, and the possible truth values that they can have is either they can be, both be true, P true, Q false, P false, Q true, or both false. What this ends up being is the only line here where we have an F is under true antecedent and false consequent, and all of the others are true. Now, there are many different reasons why this is a good account of the conditional. And since many people spend a lot of time talking about why this account is a bad account, I'm gonna say something, you know, I'm gonna raise the flag on the other side of the camp and say something about why the material conditional is a good conditional. Think back to what I said about the account of disjunction and why we prefer inclusive disjunction over exclusive, because it involves fewer assumptions about the nature of disjunction in English. It's the same thing with the material conditional. We look at all of the possible combinations and ask ourselves, are any of them obviously false? And the line where we have a true antecedent and a false conditional, a uh, false consequent, this is obviously false. If, for instance, I say, if you bring, if you give me a penny, I give you a horse. And you give me a penny and I don't give you a horse, I said something false. So there is a, an obvious problem here. But all of the other cases are not obviously false. So if you give me a penny, if I say, if, I, if you give me a penny, uh, I give you a horse. You give me a penny and I give you a horse. Great, there's no problem there. There's no conflict, there's no inconsistency. Suppose you don't actually give me any pennies, but I give you a horse anyway, because I'm just that nice kind of person. Again, this is not inconsistent with my claim that if I give you, if you give me a penny, I'll give you a horse. And then consider the case where you don't give me any pennies, I don't give you any horses, you don't have space for horses, I don't actually have any horses to give you. Again, this is not inconsistent with the conditional claim that if you were to give me a penny, then, you know, I would be obliged to give you a horse. So my primary the primary reason why I like the material conditional, and I actually think it is the right account of the conditional to be using in a context of kind of introductory basic logic, is that it makes the fewest assumptions about the nature of truth and falsity of conditionals. It leaves open space for there to be more complex types of conditionals that you could define independently of the material conditional. You could add, in a system that has material implication, you can add strict implication. You can define strict implication in terms of material implication, but you can't do the other way around. If you have a material conditional, you can add on to that to make sense of counterfactual conditionals. If you have a material conditional, you can add on to it a type of intuitionistic conditional or relevant conditional. You may not even know what these are, but you know, like I said, logicians love conditionals. They have lots to say about them. And the more that you study the ways in which conditionals are used in English, for instance, 
to give promises or to issue threats or to give commands, you'll see that it doesn't make sense to single out any one of these more complex types as being the right type of conditional. Instead, what we should be doing as logicians is making as few assumptions as possible about the truth and falsity of propositions. We can always, we can always make more assumptions later. Once we have an understanding of how can counterfactual conditionals work, we can then build this on top of the material conditional. But without making any assumptions whatsoever about what type of conditional we have, the material conditional allows us to capture the intuition that it's obviously false. Something has obviously gone wrong in the case where you have a true antecedent and a false consequence. None of the other cases are obviously false, so why not call them true? You might have reasons later on to not call them true, but lacking any other information about the conditional, just say true. That's fine. So I'm actually a huge proponent of the material conditional. I'm totally happy with this analysis of it as a generic base type of conditional that doesn't make any further assumptions about the nature of implication that's going on. As soon as you start wanting to specialize, fine then, develop a more specialized connective with different semantics. But for now, we're just looking at basic, ordinary, run of the mill, no assumptions, only call it false if it's obviously false logic, in which case this is the table that you want for the conditional. Now, there you have it. I've given you my couple minute spiel as to why I think the material conditional is in fact the right conditional to be using in propositional logic. In the next video, I'm going to talk about how to integrate these different tables that I've given you and use them to generate the truth values for incredibly complex sentences involving multiple different types of connectives. I'll also say something about the notion of tautology, the notion of inconsistency, and the notion of consistency. So all of these will feed into our understanding of the truths and falsities of individual sentences. And then on that, just as we did with the syllogistic, we will define a notion of argument in propositional logic and a notion of good argument. So I look forward to seeing you again soon. Cheers.